We might not be able to buy a home in this economy, but we sure can make it in Blender. But before that, we need to learn how to add objects to Blender, and today we are going to discuss just that. But before we dive into learning how to add objects into Blender, here is a quick reminder if you are looking to effortlessly create stunning artwork and save valuable time. We have got a treasure trove of ready-to-use assets waiting for you on our website 3D.Design. Let the creative journey begin. Hey, Sam from 3D here. To recap, in the previous video, we learned about how to navigate the viewport, the middle mouse button to rotate, and shift the pen, and zoom in and zoom out by the middle scroll wheel. Now, today we are going to learn how we can add these objects into the scene and how we can move them around, rotate them, and scale them however we want. So let's begin. Now, by default, Blender gives you a lot of options for different kinds of objects you can add to your scene. But today we are going to just talk about meshes. Now to access the Add menu, what you do is go up here and click this Add button. And whoa, there is so much stuff. But don't worry, we'll just be talking about meshes today. Now, as I said in the previous video, there are many ways to do a thing in a blender. What you can do to access the Add menu is either press this button, or anywhere in the viewport. You have to have your mouse in the viewport, just press Shift A. If I go in this area right here and press Shift A, nothing will happen. My mouse has to be in the viewport. When I press the shift key, it will open the add menu. Now once you open the add menu, you will see a lot of stuff. But you don't need to worry about that. As I said in the previous video, it's always better to divide things into chunks. Now for meshes, we have around 10 options. We have a plane, a cube, a circle, a UV sphere, an icosphere, a cylinder, a cone, a torus, a grid, and a monkey. Now let's try adding a cube to our scene. What we'll do is press shift A, mesh, and then cube. And voila, we have a cube in our scene. Now, whenever we add something new in Blender or add any object to our viewport, we see this little menu over here, this little black bar. And if we click it, we have a whole bunch of options that we can use to modify the objects. Let's say when you add a cube, you want to change its size. I can do that by changing this slider. I can change its location, its rotation, and all of that stuff. But if I add an object and I click out of it or click anywhere else in the viewport after adding the object, that menu on the bottom will disappear and there is no way to access that menu ever again. Suppose we want to access that menu again. In that case, we have to delete the object. Go into add menu by pressing shift A, add that object back again. And then we will see the menu again. And again, if we click somewhere else on the viewport, that menu will disappear. Now for the cube, the menu is pretty simple. It just gives us some options to change the location, some options to change the rotation, and an option to change the size. Now let's try adding a more complex object. That is maybe a torus. A torus is a donut-like shape, but in mathematical terms, that shape is called a torus. So as you can see on the left, we have so many more options now for the torus. Now these two options are on top here, you don't need to worry about them. We will only be talking about these options right here because the top ones you might not understand if you are a beginner in Blender. Now, if I change this option, which is the major radius, it will increase the overall size of the donut. And if I increase the minor radius, it will increase the thickness of the donut. Damn, now that is a donut I would like to eat. Again, we have the simple options, location, and rotation on X, Y, and see however we want. And that's pretty much it. Again, for everything that you will add to your viewport, you will always see this menu, whatever it might be. Even if we add, let's say this sphere, this UV sphere, a globe-like shape, we will have options for that as well. We can increase its rings, we can increase its radius, we can change its location, again rotation, and all of that good stuff. Now, let's say you just added a cube, and you accidentally clicked somewhere else on the screen. And now, when that menu disappears, you might be asking, will I never be able to change the location or rotation if I want to change it after I click somewhere else? I mean, that's a pretty bad thing in a program that won't let you do anything else after you click off the object right. And of course, that isn't true. Now, I'm going to tell you about how you can move objects in Blender. So, let's say you added an object by using the Shift A, shortcut that I just told you and you added a monkey. And now, let's say you want to move the monkey to the right. For moving any kind of object that we have in our viewport, the shortcut for moving is by pressing G. If you press G, it will highlight the object with white outlines and you can just move your mouse to move anywhere. To rotate the object, the key is going to be R. If I press R, it will allow me to rotate the object however I want. Lastly, to scale the object. If I want to make the object bigger, the key is going to be S. If I press S and move my mouse, I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller. 
Now, if you are following along and you press G, you are trying to move it. It's not really that precise. I mean, when I press G, it gets highlighted and I'm trying to move my mouse. I'm not really in that much control of where the monkey goes. So, for that, we have a few more shortcuts. Now, my advice to you is don't get overwhelmed by these options or these shortcuts. Just try to do them over and over again and you will be able to learn very easily. Now, if you press G and you want to move the model very precisely, what you do is press X and the X line on your viewport will be highlighted. That means that the model is just going to be moving on the X axis now. Now, let's say you want to do the same thing, but you want to do it on the Y axis. You will press G, which is the shortcut for moving objects in Blender, and then you will press Y and you will only be able to move your object on the Y axis. You can do the same thing by pressing G, and see that means you will only be able to move on the Z axis. And you can already see that by this you can control the movements of your object very very precisely. Now that is very similar to scaling and rotation as well. Let's say if I press R, which is a shortcut for rotating objects in Blender, I don't have that much control of where the monkey is being rotated to. But if I press the X axis, the monkey will only rotate on the X axis. If I press the Y button, the monkey will only rotate on the Y axis. And if I press the Z button, the monkey will always rotate on the Z axis. Pretty simple, right? Again, the same thing for scaling as well to make an object bigger or smaller. The shortcut for that is by pressing S and you can make it bigger. Let's say I want to make it bigger on the X axis. Again, I will press X and I can just stretch this out and make it a wide monkey. I can press S and Z and I can stretch it out in the Z axis. And then I can press S and Y to stretch it out on the Y axis. Now we are still following the theme where there are many ways to do a single thing in Blender. Now, one of the ways you can move, rotate and scale objects like I just told you is by these gizmos over here on the left. If you don't see these gizmos over here and for some reason they are not appearing for you, you don't need to worry at all. Just press T on your keyboard and you can hide them and see them. So don't worry if these gizmos are not showing. Just press T and it should be fine. Now, if you hover over things, you will not only see the shortcuts, but you will also see what these things do. Now, to move, I can just press this one. And by these arrows over here, I can do pretty much the same thing that I just told you. Move on the X axis, move on the Y axis, move on the Z axis. To rotate, I have these and I can rotate on the X axis and Y axis and Z axis. And the same thing with scaling. I have these arrows again. I can just use it to change the direction in which I scale the object in. And again, if you want these gizmos to go away, just click this select box here and the gizmos will disappear. The best way is always to use shortcuts because it will make your workflow fast. So I can just press G, move it around anywhere and press S and scale it however I want. Press R to rotate it however you want. So learning the shortcuts is always, always going to be very helpful in the long run. Now there is one more thing right here which says transform, which I didn't talk about. If you click this tool, it will give you all of the above tools that I mentioned in one single way. Now by the arrows, I can move it. By the rings, I can rotate it and by the squares, I can just scale it. Now let's quickly recap what we have learned so far to add an object into Blender. What we do is we press shift and A and we go into mesh or any object you want to add and then we choose any of the default options that Blender gives us. When you add an object, you always have this menu in the corner. If you click it, you will be given some options that will allow you to modify the object. For some objects, the options will be very big. And for some objects, the options will be very small. So we also learned that to move an object in the viewport anywhere you want, you can press the G key to move, or you can just use this tool over here, or you can press the R key to rotate, or you can press just this tool over here, or you can use the S key to scale it, or you can use this tool over here. Now you might wonder why would you even need to add these random objects into your scene. The reason is that these are the primitive shapes of Blender and you can think of them as Lego blocks. And by using these blocks, you can make anything you want. Let's say I add a plane, which is just this floor here. I scale it by pressing the S key. I add a cube on top of it. I move the cube up so it's sitting nicely on the plane. Let's scale the cube first. I'm going to scale it on the X axis first. Then I'll be scaling it on the Y axis to make this road thingy. Then we will press Shift A, we will add a UV sphere, we will scale it down, and then we will add it on top. There you go, we made some kind of weird looking very basic street lamp or something. 3D is very much like Lego blocks, and once you get the hang of it you can use these primitive shapes that Blender provides you to do a lot of cool stuff. Now that is pretty much it for how you can add meshes to your 3D model, and objects into your scene and how you can move them around, rotate them, and scale them. As you can see, I did not talk about any of the other options that are in the add menu. 
because for now you don't need to worry about that. If I start telling you about all the options, you won't understand and get overwhelmed very easily. Because there is a lot of potential in this software and a lot of things it can do. So again, we will take it in chunks and in a future video I might tell you about all the other ones as well and what they do. Now to end things off, I have a little trick for you that you can do to play around with more objects in Blender. It's a little secret, so don't tell anyone. If you just go into Edit, Preferences and Add-ons and then in the search bar type Extra, you will find these two options. Be sure that you have this option not checked and that you have these two options checked. Now I want you to choose this option, Add Mesh Extra Objects. Just click this checkbox and then close this window. And now check this out. Press Shift to go into the Mesh menu. And whoa, there are so many cool options now. Like, check this out. If you go into this Torres object, you can look at this cool object that wasn't there before. And then you have diamonds as well if you go here. You can add a gem into your scene and play with that if you want. We will move that to the side with the G key, Shift A. And we have a rock generator. We have so many weird shapes and a step pyramid like this. We have a gear right here. And as you can see on the left, while I'm adding these objects, as I told you before, for every object you add in the viewport, you will see all of these options to modify those things. Now for the gear, there are a lot and a lot of options. And by changing it, you can see how it modifies the object. So what I would recommend you is just get into the software and just play around with stuff. Play around with some of these options because sometimes that is the best way to learn software. To just get in and play around and just figure things out for yourself. You can try changing all of these options to make these cool looking objects. I can increase this. I can decrease that. And you can do the same. And that's it for this video. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out our vast library of 3D character models at 3 dot design. I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.